It's been a while since we've done independent publishers, and it's been a while since we've done Valiant Comics. Today we're going to be concluding the Bloodshot storyline that we've been doing for quite some time, so that you can go pick up Bloodshot Salvation, the continuation to this plot. Now it's time to see what would happen if the entirety of New York City became Bloodshots and became ravenous killers. <laughs> When we last left off with Bloodshot, Ray had been taken away to Bloodshot Island where Project Rising Spirit was using him, and other Bloodshots to test out their new weapon, Deathmate. But after coming face to face with Deathmate, Ray learned that the person inside was really the Geomancer, Kay McHenry, the woman who died for him in an attempt to free him from the Nanites. With the combined efforts of the Bloodshots, Ray managed to stop Kay and escape the island with the other Bloodshots, Viet Man, Cold Man, Tank Man, and Quiet Man. But PRS has moved on to their next phase, and they released the Bloodshot Virus in all of Manhattan. Off of the Pacific Ocean, Ray and the other Bloodshots drift along the waters, waiting to finally see some sign of hope that they're going to be rescued. Viet says that this is insane. They've been out here for weeks, and they're going to starve sitting out here. Tank tells him that they're not going to starve. If he's really hungry, jump in and catch another shark. Viet gets up shouting, Well, yeah, I'm sick of fish. And Tank steps up telling him, Well, I'm sick of you! While the two of them argue, Ray tells them, Be quiet, something's coming. And Cold says, I don't hear anything. Tank looks around and he points up into the sky, telling them, Over there. And Ray says, I know that plane. It's Ninjak. As the hatch opens, Ninjak leans out, telling them, Hey, long time no see. Looks like you made a few friends down here, Ray. Ray tells him, Yeah, a few. And Ninjak tells him, well, there's no time for small talk. We're having a bit of an emergency, and I'm pretty sure we're going to need your help on this one. Meanwhile, over in Manhattan, the bloodshot virus is flooding through the city, causing the masses to be thrown into a destructive rage. Inside of the PRS bunker, FBI agent Diane Festival and Ray's girlfriend watches as Morris Kozul says that they now have a front row seat to everything that's happening. Diane asks, how can you be so smug at a time like this? You're killing people out there. And Mora says, yeah, short-term loss for a long-term gain. When this is all over, America will be safer and more powerful than it ever was before. Diane lunges at Morris, shouting for him to stop, and Morris tells her to calm down. She's sure that she doesn't have a few nanites in her. Take them into holding. As Diane and Magic are taken away, they're thrown into their cell, and Magic says they won't be getting out of here anytime soon if she tries to kill them. Diane says, all right, then what do you suggest that we do? And Magic tells her that they need to wait until the coast is clear, and then they're going to get the hell out of here. Diane asks how, so Magic pulls out a key card, stating that the card that she stole from the guard, of course. Meanwhile, while the people in Manhattan are trying to find somewhere safe, at the gate headquarters, Colonel Capshaw shouts that things are getting out of control. Where the hell is Unity? Unity is the Valiant Universe's version of their team. Over the radio, Livewire says that her and Ginger are on their way. They're going to try and contain as many of the infected as they can. The massive robot Ginger then says, Affirmative, protection and containment protocols initiated. But as Livewire scans the area, she tells Capshaw that it's worse than she thought. And Capshaw responds, telling her that he understands. Ninjak is in route with the real bloodshot. Just contain what they can in the meantime. Livewire tries to fight off some of the infected, but she says that there's no way for her to control the nanites themselves. There's just too many of them. Capshaw asks, what is that supposed to mean? Can't she just focus on one infected at a time? And Livewire tells her, no. She doesn't understand. The nanites are everywhere. They are in the air. Back on Ninjak's ship, he goes over the footage of Manhattan telling Ray that this is far worse than what happened in Colorado. Under his breath, Ray says, it's gotta be PRS. And Tank yells, you bet your britches that it's those sons of guns, all right? Ninjak tells Ray, look, the nanites in your blood may be the very thing that could stop whatever's happening out there. And Ray tells him, I was able to absorb the nanites from a few people, but this is not like before. Ninjak goes in to respond, and his words trail off as he groans in pain. He then falls out of the pilot's chair, and the aircraft begins to spin out of control. Back in Manhattan, the infected begin to grab onto Livewire, and as she gets up, her eyes turn red and her skin turns white. Over at the crash site with Ray and the others, he crawls out of the wreckage asking how is everyone, and Tank says that Viet and Quiet are down and out, but Cold is. Cold stops him, telling him, I'm alive, though in a tough spot, comrade. Ray tells Tank to pick Cold up, and just as they pull, there's a flash and Ray's head flies off. Behind him, Ninjak gets up holding a sword with eyes red and skin white. He's become one of the infected bloodshots. As Viet and Quiet get up, Viet shouts, why did the ninja dude get all pale like that? Viet runs in, and Tank also charges at Ninjak, and he shouts, Quiet! Go get Ray's head and put it back on! 
Quiet looks at Ray's head, and he pulls his body over, telling him, All right, come on, Nanites, do your thing. As Quiet holds out Ray's head, the Nanites get to work reconnecting the tissue, and then Ray gasps for air. Viet shouts as Ninjak cuts off one of his arms, and then Ray runs in telling them, I got this. After tackling Ninjak, he jumps onto his back telling him, hey, this is gonna hurt a little bit, and then he focuses on the Nanites. The little red droplets pull away from Ninjak's eyes, and Ray starts to suck in the Nanites, taking them out of Ninjak's body. As Ray lets go, Ninjak falls to his knees shouting, bloody hell, and Viet says that he didn't know that he could do that. Ray says, yeah, found out back in Colorado. Pretty sure we're gonna have to be doing a whole lot more of that once we get to the city. Tank asks how exactly are they supposed to get to Manhattan? from New Jersey, and then everybody notices the family in their van. Moments later, Ray and the others pile into the small van, and Ninjak says, This is humiliating. Back at the PRS bunker, two of the guards begin to make their way back when Diane and Magic attack them and take their guns. Diane tells Magic that she should get going, head south since the infected look like they're going north. Magic asks, what about her? And Diane says that she's going to stay back and deal with Morris. Magic hugs her, telling her, I don't want to leave you alone but I want to find Ray. And Diane tells her that she should go find him. It looks like Ninjak's plane went down in Jersey, not far from the tunnel. But remember, head south. Out in Manhattan, Ginger reports that they can soon no longer contain the infected. And Capshaw says, just do the best that you can until we get more support. And another officer runs up to Capshaw, stating that they have a problem. Capshaw tells him, no crap we have a problem. The populace of New York City is being turned into mindless killers, and all of our best agents are down there. And the officer says, no, it's not that. It's the military. They've mobilized, and they're moving into the hot zone. Just then, the military airship shoots over Ginger and Capshaw radios to the general, telling him that she said not to go in there. The general tells her that Gate has lost control of the situation. The military is now taking over. Down in the streets, one of the military tanks begins to swarm around the infected, and then one of the gunners opens fire, shooting everyone back. Capshaw watches, and says all of those innocent people. And the general tells her, no, hostiles, they need to be contained. But as all of the people that got shot get back up, Capshaw says, no, you've just armed them. Over on the highway, Viet asks, so why are they going straight into the problem when they just got away from one? This isn't their fight. And Ray says that he can't make them do anything. But what he does know is if PRS is down there, we'll never really be free. Just then a blast shoots down the road, flipping the minivan over, and Ray looks up to see Kay. Back at the PRS bunker, Morris gives the order to Deathmate to kill the Bloodshots and Ninjak, and then he hears a click. Diane points a rifle at the back of his head, telling him it's time to shut this down. Over on the highway, Kay grabs onto Ray and begins to choke him, and as Ray struggles, he tells her that he has to stop this. He knows what it's like to feel alone and scared with no way out. But there is a way out. Let him help, Kay. She looks into his eyes, and then she throws him to the ground, and Ninjak shouts that they need to take her out. Kay is a former friend of Ray and Ninjax, and when she died, it was a big blow to Ray. She was someone who helped Ray discover who he really was when he didn't know himself. But now she is nothing more than an experiment for PRS, and Ray jumps up, stopping everybody from attacking her, telling them, No, you get to the city, I'm gonna handle Kay, so go. As Ray runs back into Kay, Ninjak tells everyone, You heard the man, we got a job to do. Ray struggles, and he starts to peel back the Deathmate mask, telling Kay to look at him. He knows that she's in there, just let him in. He can fix this! Soon the nanites from Ray begin to leave his body, and they go into Kay. The two start to meld together, and in a flash, she opens up her eyes and asks, Where am I? Behind her, Ray steps out, stating that they're back where it all started, and he's here to take her home. As Ray gets up, she looks around, asking where is this place, and Ray tells her that it looks like the mall where they fought the immortal enemy. This is where she died. That storyline is in The Valiant, and I'll give you the link down below, and if I forget to do so, just check out The Valiant playlist. Not far off, a body lays in the ground, and Kane notices that it's her body, her dead body, and she asks how this is even possible. Is she in purgatory? And Ray says that he's not sure himself. It's all a bit confusing. A lot has happened since he was cured of the nanites, and then he ended up on Bloodshot Island, and then she tried to kill him. Ray takes Kay by the hand, and the two begin to run, but before they get very far, there's an explosion knocking them both to the ground. A figure starts to walk towards them on fire, and Ray says that he's not sure what that is, but they have to move. Kay asks what about her body, and Ray tells her that it has to be some kind of a trick, just leave it. Maybe the immortal enemy is still alive and after them again. As they run up a bit further, they see the dead body of the enemy. Ray fires at the figure, moving closer to them, and says that it has to be somewhat bad. They just need to get out of here. And a short while later, as the two get outside, Ray says that he can feel something weird. And Kay tells him that he looks different. As the two stand there, they begin to revert in age, becoming themselves only younger. She shouts, asking what's going on, and then another explosion comes out of the building. Ray tells her he's not sure, but that bad thing is coming. The two run into the nearby forest, and as they hold hands, the being breaks through the trees, and Kay shouts that the monster is nearby. Once there's a moment of silence, the two sit down to catch their breath, and Ray says that it's okay. 
They don't have to be scared. Monsters aren't real, right? Ray asks if she's sure, and she tells him yeah. And then she points at a castle, telling him, Look, there's our pretend castle. The monster lady can't get us in there. The two of them run into the walkway of the castle, and then there's a flash of light. That's when Blood Squirt appears, telling them, Well, 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 where were you two little miscreants going? Blood Squirt is a little kid cartoon version of Bloodshot that he sees whenever he's basically going crazy. Ray stares and says that he thinks he knows him, and Blood Squirt says, Of course you do! I'm your little bloody buddy! The squirt that brings the hurt. But if you want to get out of here, well, you're gonna have to answer the riddle. Ray says that it's a trick, and Kay steps up telling Blood Squirt that she's really good at riddles. What is it? Blood Squirt says, All right, this one's quite a doozy. The riddle is, what is death, mate? Kay then asks, what kind of riddle is that? And just then, Deathmate flies in, destroying all of the trees in her path. The two kids continue running towards the castle, and Blood Squirt shouts, wait! And Kay pushes him down into the moat. Blood Squirt shouts, it doesn't matter! You're never gonna get home without answering the riddle! As the two begin running towards the light, everything starts to change, and suddenly they're back in the real world, but still their younger selves. They walk a little further, and they see their adult bodies laying on the ground. And Ray says that they look familiar. Wait, he's seen them before. And just like that, Ray realizes that this is them and he remembers now. He knows what Deathmate is. He looks down stating that they've put all of these little robots into them. And that's what made her into a monster. Tears begin to fill her eyes as she shouts, No! And Ray grabs her telling her, It's true. You are Deathmate. She falls to her knees crying stating that she doesn't want to be this. And Ray holds her telling her, It's okay. Things were different though. Instead of him trying to remove the nanites, he's using them to mix their nanites together. It's how he came looking for her. But this is real. They're inside of themselves and they have to go back. Kay shouts that she doesn't want to. She wants to stay in here with him. She doesn't want to be a monster. And Ray takes Kay by the hand and tells her, you won't be alone. We'll do this together. I promise I won't leave you. As they sit there looking at their bodies, their younger selves begin to fade. And in the real world, both of them gasp for air as they return to their bodies. Ray gets up, asking Kay if they're really here. She tells him, yes, she's herself again. And then she kisses Ray. Just as she does, a voice calls out to Ray and he looks back to see Magic. Magic is the girl that he saved and has been with once he lost Kay. Ray walks over to Magic telling her, it's, it's not, we're, we're just. And Magic tells him, it's okay. She gets it, it doesn't matter. Ray tells her, yes, it does. And Magic stops him telling him, no, there's a plague or something happening in the city. It's like Colorado, but there's hundreds of them. He sits silent for a moment and he says, I know. That's where me and Kay are headed off to, but first I had to. Magic says, just go. If you can stop it, just go. Let her help you. Ray tells her that he'll come back here once this is over. It's supposed to be us together, Magic. Magic's face doesn't change. She tells him to go. And with that, Kay grabs Ray and they fly off. Back over in Manhattan, Ninjak and the Bloodshots are trying to hold off the infected while Cold shouts that they really need to try what Ray did to absorb the nanites. Quiet grabs one of the infected and he begins to focus, and the nanites start to come out of the person. He shouts, this is really starting to hurt! And Viet calls out that they're trying, but it's not working. Tank says that it must only be Ray and Quiet who can do it with their newer tech. And Ninjak says that if that's the case, they need Ray more than ever. Their barricades won't contain this mob any longer. Back at the PRS bunker, Morris tells Diane that if she would allow him, he would like to get back to his job now. And Diane shouts that this whole thing was his fault to begin with. Morris tells her, right, and every second that you sit here and waste, more people are going to die. He then turns to another scientist and tells them to bring Deathmate in. The scientist says that she's en route, but she's not answering their commands. Over in the streets, Ray and Kay touch down just as Livewire begins to shock Ninjak. Ray runs over, grabbing Livewire from behind, telling her that she helped him wake up before, now it's his turn. Just then, the nanites inside of Livewire begin to get sucked out, and as Livewire's eyes return to normal, the first thing that she sees is Kay. Over the radio, Morris shouts for Kay to get back to the bunker, and her eyes begin to glow as the Deathmate mask slowly begins to cover her face. She rockets into the sky, and seconds later, crashes down on that bunker. She starts taking everyone out, and Morris runs up shouting, wait, stop this, that's an order! Kay grabs Morris by the throat and tells him, no, no more orders. And Morris asks what happened to her, and she stares him right in the eye and tells him two words, I'm free, and then crack. Diane watches as blood sprays on the walls, and Kay looks over asking, who are you? Diane gets up to her feet, telling her that she's with the FBI. She was trying to stop this, and Kay asks, how are we supposed to stop it? And Diane shouts, telling her, I don't know. Deathmate was supposed to be able to do it. Something about phase three. Diane tells her that she's got to remember. But Kay says that she can't. She can remember certain things, but the programming was all broken. She looks down, and she sees her younger self standing there. And she says, of course, I know. I was really good at riddles. I could figure it out. Back in the streets, Ray and Quiet try to absorb as many nanites as they can. And with the last ones that Quiet took out, he begins to feel pain and he falls to the ground screaming. Younger Kay tells Kay, that bad stuff is happening and we can stop it. You just need to tell me a secret. Younger Kay whispers into Kay's ear and her eyes glow red and the mask comes back and she says, of course, 
and she shoots it back out of the bunker. Ray looks at Quiet and he says he's gone. And Ninjak shouts, well, we're all dead then. The infected start to take over the group and Viet shouts, this is really Fubar, man. Just as he says that, Kay flies down, pulling Ray out of the group of infected. She then sets him down, telling him that he's got to show her how. Show her how to take the nanites back. A worried look comes over Ray's eyes and he says, you just have to let them come to you. Close your eyes and feel them out there. The Deathmate suit begins to shine and she says, yes, they're everywhere. In the air, in the people, in us. She flies straight up in the sky as Ray is shouting, wait, that many will kill you. And Kay says, no, not her. She floats above the city and the sky begins to turn red. And from the ground, all of the nanites infecting the people begin to get sucked out. With all of the nanites making their way into the sky, she takes the group of them and flies up into space where she can safely destroy them, never allowing them to get back to Earth. After that, the people began to return to normal. But Ray knew that this wasn't over. Quiet gave his life stopping that plague, so the bloodshots gave Quiet what he wanted. A quiet place for him to be alone. And with that, they all said their goodbyes. Diane made it her personal mission to get the information out there, having the world to know the things that she learned. And with Kay and the other bloodshots not having a place to go, Capshaw welcomes them into Gate to try and help them find a way to become heroes. As for Ray, he took Bloodhound and he headed back to the motel where it all started. He knocks on the door and Magic opens it. She says that it's been weeks since then. She thought that he had left to be with her. He says that he promised he would come back. It just took him a while to track her down clear up some loose ends so that they could be free. As they kiss, Ray says, just us. And Bloodhound barks and Magic says, well, that's not exactly true. Ray takes Magic by the hand and he walks in, thinking that he just used to be a guy with white skin and guns. Bloodshot used to be death and chaos, but now he doesn't know what to think. For the first time, it feels like Bloodshot can be anyone, but he knows whatever he does, he won't be alone. And there you have it, the conclusion to the Bloodshot storyline. Until Bloodshot Salvation. Now that issue came out a week or two ago, depending on when you watch this. It just started and you get to see what is going to happen to Ray now that he has magic and he has a daughter. Don't forget to check that out yourself. I'll give you the link down below how to see the next part of this story and I'll give you the link on how you can buy the Bloodshot book. If you enjoy Valiant comic books, let me know in the comments down below who else or what other comics you want us to cover here. Or if you just want us to do other independent books or other publishers, then let me know that in the comments down below. Click right around here for more videos right here at Comic Story. Subscribe to keep up to date on current comic books. And don't forget, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Comic Story. On Twitter, we bring you single tweet reviews. And on Instagram, we bring you various images that we find within the comics. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you next time right here.